Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to another edition of our show, Bible Book of Our Fathers. Uh, happy Day of Simon as we end, as we're coming to the end of that uh, day for us in Israel. We are entering to our Sabbath, into our Sabbath. The Day of Simon was a historical point in our history where we had to fight against the Greeks during the time of the Maccabean period. Um, so we're going, we're going to be going into the Sabbath. So we're here to begin our uh, program tonight. Uh, I'm Deacon Yawasap, and to my right is... Shalom Israel, Captain Soraya. Hey, Shalom Israel, Officer Eli. Shalom Israel, Officer not showing. We'll sign Christ bless. All praise to the Most High, all praise to the Most High. Glad that you brothers and sisters could be with us here today. We have a, uh, a important class to go over. Uh, the name of this class today is Wickedness in Our Midst. So what do we do in spite of the wickedness? And that's, in, that's important. It's, you know, it's, it's one thing to be able to point out the uh, problems and the, and the issues, but you have to also bring forth the solutions and the directions on what to do in spite of the wickedness. So that, I want to go into that today. Uh, so we, it's, it's, it's not exactly the same uh, subject that we were dealing with uh, for the past two weeks, but wickedness is a common denominator. So we want to talk about the wickedness. We want to continue to bring up uh, the the situations that afflict our people so that we can be mindful of them. It's, it's always good to know about the pitfalls and the different things that are out here that are set to beset us and to take us off the course of uh, righteous redemption. So, um, so th today's class is going to be geared towards that. We're going to uh, continue to go into these subjects, uh, the many different things that's going on in this society. Again, that is that is out to beset us, and the wickedness has definitely polluted everything. Uh, before we do that, let me just read this disclaimer right here. Um, uh, we are Israel United in Christ, of course, and uh, we are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel United in Christ is a nonviolent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if, any, if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat, as stated in the Holy Bible, Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1 of King James. Um, so, talking about wickedness, uh, let's get that scripture. Let's start it off with uh, Second Ezra's. I got a lot of videos for you, brothers and sisters, today. And, uh, so, we're going to take a ride. This is the, this is the day we're going to do it. Now, there's uh, so much information on here that we're going to be dealing with. Hopefully we can get it all in this, in this segment here, but if not, then we'll do uh, the second part uh, next week, Lord willing. But after that, then we're going to totally change the subject into some other things. Um, one of the, one of the things that I want to say is that it's good that we, uh, IUIC, Israel United in Christ, we have a, a variety of different teachers, meaning it, all teaching the scriptures, but we're bringing up different subjects. You know, I was very happy to see the uh, the video that Bishop the, the, on the Sabbath class last week when he uh, went over the importance of our health. That is super important. So I was so happy to uh, to see that. I'm happy about IUIC, period, because we are a disciplined group, and I'm proud to say that. I'm glad to say that. I'm, I'm happy that the Lord has had mercy on us and he has shown us favor and we are we are indebted to him, okay, for for him for him showing us this mercy that he has allowed us to bring a whole encyclopedia of information that is geared to helping our people on all different kinds of levels. So, on this particular uh, show, I'm just talking about the wickedness and how to avoid it for your salvation. So that's what I'm dealing with, and other brothers uh, will be dealing with other subjects as well. So, like I said before, it's great. To, uh, to be a part of this mission and to see our people light up with truth in the midst of the darkness that is all around us. So I'm happy to be a part of that. And so are uh, many brothers and sisters that's a part of this mission. So let us continue to shine our light to our brothers and sisters that are on the outside of this gospel. So they too can come and get some y'all. All right. 
Let me read that scripture. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 6. Let's yes, talk about this wickedness a little bit. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 6. This is Officer Nashan. Go ahead with it. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. For wickedness has exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Read it again. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Go ahead. And their hurtful works. And are- the hurtful works of wickedness. Come on, this right here is going to let us know what time we're in. We're in the, what, I'm going to say this. I'm going to jump the gun a little bit. Deacon, a- uh, Deacon Ithon, uh, a few years ago, actually, we were having a discussion, and he mentioned that we are in the age of decadence of this society, not ours. In this uh, so-called American society, we have reached, we are entering into the age of decadence actually it's been going on now it's been going on for a while but now people are starting to feel it now but the day the the uh decadence has been going on for centuries well for yeah a couple of centuries actually but m- but more prevalent during the time of let's say the uh 50s the 60s primarily the 60s because that's when israel started to wake up and that's when the oppression and everything started to come against israel and P- and and the rulers of this society have gotten happy about the condition that they were putting us in mm-hmm. and they've and they forgot that as they continue to oppress and destroy us eventually that same spirit is going to leak out onto their own okay so that's what we're going to talk a little bit about that today uh because you will reap what you sow that's mm-hmm. basically what i'm saying you will reap what you sow read it again second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 6 for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Meaning wickedness is everywhere. There's no escape. So ain't no, ain't no such thing as getting on a plane and flying to another country talking about something. You're going to escape the wickedness. You ain't escaping nothing. The wickedness is everywhere. All over. Go ahead. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. That's the reason why Job 9.24 says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It's telling you straight up that wickedness is everywhere. And they're what? And, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. And the hurtful works of wickedness has reached its pinnacle, has reached its top. That's what the most I saying. So guess what that means? That means the judgment of this society is in is in sight. Scripturally, it's in sight. You know, it's amazing. you got people that's trying to downgrade the Bible. They don't want to deal with the Bible. But the Bible is the records of everything. And when I say everything I'm talking about in terms of what the prophets wrote, the prophets, our forefathers, the Bible, the book of our fathers, they have written about all of the history from the beginning all the way up to now. Yeah. So they wrote about this kingdom. Mm-hmm. They wrote about a people that's in this kingdom that's catching hell. They wrote about that. They wrote about the errant ones who's mistreating the people of God. They wrote about that. They also wrote about the decadence mm-hmm. and the destruction of the same kingdom upon our people. They wrote about that. And it's in the Bible. And all of the preachers are supposed to be bringing this information out. That's right. And, Deke, I want to say right quick, too, I heard mm-hmm. you say that word um, probably a couple of weeks ago, decadence. Mm-hmm. I myself had to look the word up, okay? But like you said, you can look back through the through the history of our forefathers and see the decadence of of, of all those kingdoms coming down. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was just reading decadence is Yeah, let's put it up there. Yeah, the word some, you, you're right. Somebody might not, you know. Yeah, it's not the average what we say Negro word, you yeah. know. So let's get it up there. Decadence. Mm-hmm. That's what let's let's put that word up there. Cause that's what we we're we're in this age now. People start getting people get uh roguish and bogus mm-hmm. and what they say Power, what they, what they say, power corrupts, <laughs> uh, um, but uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. So when they get so lavished in their destruction of us, they start to start to turn on their own. Let's read what it says. You got it? Decadence. Mm-hmm. That's no, no, no. D, uh, it's it's, it's yeah, D-E-C-A. You got to spell it right there. It is right there. That's it. Right. That's it. Moral or cultural decline, decline. as you're right, decline, decadence, yes. the bringing down. That's the most sides bringing it down. A moral or cultural decline as characterized by excessive indulgence in pleasure or luxury. That's exactly what kind of system you're living in now. Wow. Epicureanism, wickedness, wickedness every yes. a foolish frolic. Right. All kinds of wickedness and nastiness, and they're trying to get rid of the Bible one hundred percent completely. Hmm. 
I think they say we got more millionaires in America than <laughs> anywhere else in the world. Wow. See, that's what. So they're living in the splendor mm-hmm. of decadence. Coachella. Right. Coachella. I don't even know what that means. You don't want to hit me with something. Why? Yeah, huh? say, don't be hitting me with so these. Because you, you young folk, y'all got these words out here that I don't know nothing about. Huh? Yeah. Right. Uh, so there you go. Luxurious self indulgence. That's 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 the uh, situation. Degeneracy. I like that word. Yeah, Degener- yeah, yeah, that's what's yeah, going on. Yeah. Debauchery. See, mm-hmm. these are corruption. Right. Right. And that's all I heard was wickedness right, when it right. said excessive indulgence give, give, and pleasure and luxury. Right. Give me Isaiah. So I ain't going off. I'm getting mm-hmm. in, I'm gonna get into the stuff. Give me Isaiah fourteen. Cause corruption, that's that word there. Mm-hmm. You see the you see out of decadence, you see uh degeneres uh degeneracy, mm-hmm. you see debauchery. Right. That's just some nasty filthiness right. there. Uh then you got corruption. That's corruption. what I'm gonna di- talk hit, about. Hit the corruption. arrow. Hit the arrow. Yeah. Hit that. Corruption. Uh, perversion, sinfulness, self indulgence, mm-hmm. uh, Epicureanism. That was a word I was talking about earlier. See that word at the bottom? Epicureanism. Mm-hmm. Meaning, he, it, you whatever feels good, do it. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's what that's talking about. Uh, mm-hmm. Isaiah 14, and um, I think it's like verse. Six. Uh, no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. It said about the worm is spread under thee. Where's that at? Uh, 11. Yeah, read that. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 11. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Thy pump. Thy pompousness. In this, America is a pompous society. Mm. They don't give a damn about nobody. They, they go in anybody's lands, knock them off, take over their resources and say to hell with it. Mm. You go bomb the man over there in Iran and dare them to fight back. Wow. <laughs> That's something else. <laughs> right. He's saying y'all better not do nothing. Mm. Damn. What a bully. Huh? huh? Read that again. <laughs> Thy pump is brought down to the grave. The Mosai, this is about the destruct. This this chapter is about the decadence of Babylon. Mm. That's what this chapter is talking about. Oh, this chapter is talking about Isaiah chapter thirteen and chapter fourteen is specifically talking about the decadence and the decay and the destruction of Babylon the Great, where we are at now. Read it again. Isaiah chapter fourteen and verse eleven. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Their proudness, their boastfulness is brought down. This is past tense. This has already happened. When you read the first few verses, it's letting you know this is the prophecy about this since the system going down. The parallel to this is one of the last chapters in Revelation. That's what this is parallel into. Go ahead. Read. And the noise of thy vows. And the noise of their Christian programs, their democracy, all that stuff going to be garbage. No more, nobody's going to be paying attention to it now because your, 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 your rulers are robbing the system. They're destroying, they're destroying your constitution. They're destroying your bill of rights. All of that is happening now. They're getting rid of all of that. And when I say yours, I ain't talking about black folk. I ain't talking about the Israelite because we ain't never had that. The Dred Scott decision already told us that we weren't a part of none of that anyway. Okay, but this is talking about you Edomites. You losing your kingdom. Read it again. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Thy boasting and thy proudness against how you, how do you destroy the Israelites is brought down to the grave, making fun of us and, and mocking us and all of that. All that's going to be brought down. Go ahead. And the noise of thy vows. And the noise of your Christianity program, all that mess going to get done away with. Nobody going to listen to that stuff. Your so-called images of white Jesus, people going to find out that that's a bunch of lies. Your white images of the angels, your white images of God and the Jews, all that mess going to go down. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. The worm is spread under thee. The worm. That's the decadence. The worm. The worm represents corrosion. When worms get inside apples or get inside fruits, they destroy it. They rot it. They rot it. Right. The worm, what? The worm is spread under thee. The worm is talking about your corrupt leaders, your elite corrupt leaders. That's basically using the whole society as their peasants, basically. You so-called white people that's, in your, uh, that's on your blue-collar jobs and all of that, you're catching just as much hell as anybody else, and it got you thinking that you, that, that you, on, like you, like you included with them. Mm-hmm. No, you're catching more. You're catching hell now. The chickens are coming home to roost. They've been doing it to us. Yeah. We've always caught hell. Right. But now right. you've seen that these people got an insatiable appetite for more and more greed Mm-hmm. After a while, how many millions? They says twenty million of us in this country. Mm-hmm. That ain't enough people to explain. They said, "No, we need we need a bigger, a bigger uh, lump of people to get rid to 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 take advantage of." So then they start dealing with their own. Mm-hmm. 
And that's the reason why you got all these Edomites in the streets acting up now. I was just checking out, right. yo, during the, when this thing first started with this COVID-19 thing, brothers, you know, because you're checking things out. Mm-hmm. That, you know, in certain, certain states, they got certain kinds of laws, gun laws and things like, you know, where you're allowed to have, you know, if you got legally. I ain't talking about nothing illegal for right. somebody to run and say something mm-hmm. crazy. If you ain't legal to carry, don't mess with it. I don't want to hear nobody say that, that we're uh, talking about anybody picking up anything if you ain't licensed uh, to have it. So right. we ain't talking about that mess at all. You heard us in our opening. We don't condone any kind of uh, violence or anything of that sort at all. You must obey the laws of the land. So I just have to say that because I know right. how some people are wicked as hell yeah. and try to derail what we're saying into something foolish. Right. Right. But I want to make this point, though. All of the gun shops, all of the ammo, Gone. The white boys, the Edomites went in there and bought up every damn thing. Right. They bought it all up. There's nothing left. Nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's showing you that they know that they why are they doing that? Because they feel that their government is turned against them. That's why they do it. Because they themselves are feeling the repression Mm -hmm. that we felt for centuries. Right. Now they're starting to get a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. I hope y'all can dig what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, when you think like you said, what when you think about a worm. Yeah. A worm eats something from the inside out. Oh yes, and that's that's what it's shown. And in, in as far as that decadence, yes, they're getting eat. This society is getting eaten from right. the inside exactly. out. Exactly, they worrying about Iraq and Iran. Right, when you know you need to be worrying about got, the red and the blue. Right, you got a mo- you got a moral internal rot that's mm-hmm. going on in the system. That's what that. The, look at this thing here. Go back to the other one. You got immorality. Go back to this thing. The other. Because we, I think we clicked to get that. What was the other thing? I saw something about moral. Where was the original? Yeah, there Black it is. That's it right there. There's it. Mm. Uh, it says de- decadence. Bring it down so they can see the whole word. Bring it down just a little bit. There you go. Decadence. Mm-hmm. Moral or cultural decline. That's the worm. You're morally corrupt. Mm. Now, because you, you're pushing abominations and you're trying to get rid of the Bible. Mm-hmm. You've already destroyed us. You already put drugs, miseducation, jails, mm-hmm. all kinds of things to destroy our people. Now the chickens is coming to you now mm-hmm. because of that, that moral decline. Decadence has hit. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, what you, that's, that's what's going on now. That's the reason why you got all of these people protesting in the street mm-hmm. and, 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 and walking up on certain buildings talking about some open the businesses back up, do this, right. do that, because they feel the pressure now. Mm-hmm. Okay, you black and Hispanic, you Israelites, stay the hell out of that thing. That is not your fight. Leave that alone. They got a re- They have a. They have a. What's the word? They have an obligation to fight. You don't. You in captivity. This is not your rest. You in captivity. It's their job to fight for what their fathers have stolen, and robbed, and raped to get. Right. That's their job. Okay. When when you were being raped and robbed and murdered, nobody really came to help you. You might have had a few that 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 joined hands and all that and took a right. couple of watermelons upside the head yeah. and all of that, you know. But that ain't the real help. The, oh, no, no, no. You still caught hell because the mere fact that they were even here to prosper is the direct result of our being exploited or being exploited. Sometimes we miss things like that. The mere fact that they can even be here is because of our. Uh, our slavery because of what happened to but right. what was stripped from us gave them the uh, gave them the the platform mm-hmm. to even say anything about justice or injustice they're not even supposed to be here mm-hmm. period <laughs> so sometimes you negroes need to get that through your thick heads because our people just can't see things can't see the forest for the trees uh read that again isaiah oh. Chapter 14 and verse 11. And I don't mean to come on our people sometimes, but sometimes you can't just tap them and wake them up. Right. Sometimes you got to, yeah, you know, yeah. pour water on them. Right. Put the powder on put the hand. Pa- right. 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 Nah, nah, nah. You have to put the powder on your hand. <laughs> oh, okay. Right. I thought you were talking about something else. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Wow. Go ahead. Isaiah 14 and verse 11. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Thy boasting in their proudness. In other words, decadence has resulted. Go ahead. And the noise of thy vows. The worm is spread under thee. The word is the corruption. That's what it's talking about. Corrosion and robbing and 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 uh and exploiting and destroying in their own robbing this system. That's the only word I could really think of. Read it again. Read that statement again. The worm. The worm is spread under thee. The worm is the corruption from your politicians, your leaders, your elite leaders that run this whole society. 
And and the worms cover them. Meaning you're not going to recover from this thing. That's what it's talking about. And the worms is going to completely erode and destroy this whole system. And it always happened. Every every uh, empire had its day. When they started out, they were strong. Then when they were rolling in their victories and so forth, things were moving in a particular way. Then people began to get careless. And they began to get, uh, what were some of these words? Degenerate. They began to get perverse, immoral, self-indulgent. They began to take on the spirit of Epicureanism. Like nothing's going to stop me. I'm pompous now. Nothing. There's no judgment coming to me. Start speaking boastful. Yeah, God sound. didn't do that like that man said. God yeah. didn't do that. Right. We did that. That's right. an example. Right. That's an example right. right there. But yet they're saying, God, we trust. What the hell are they talking right. about? That word Epicureanism, that sounds like a word you need a lawyer in the courtroom with there. Yeah. I, yeah. I lost yeah. me on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Epic, uh, so, you know, you had you, you, you can go back into the history, even the biblical history. They talk a little bit about that. Okay. But um, but that's but that's what that's talking about there, how, how we have our people uh, – uh, that's looking up to these people, and these people are stone cold mad. Wow. Okay. These these rulers and leaders now, and and the rest of the people in this earth is just caught up with it. Okay. Uh, read that one more time, and let's move on. I'm, I don't want to stay too much time on this. Go I, ahead. Isaiah chapter eleven, uh, fourteen, verse eleven. Go ahead. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Go ahead. And the noise of thy vows, the worm is spread under thee. The worm is corruption. And the worms cover thee. So that's that's the uh, the decadence that's and that's the decadence that's going to hit the society. And the worms cover Co- thee. And the worms cover thee, meaning they're not going to come out of it. it. In other words, the morality that you're expecting to get, you're not going to get it because this is not God's kingdom. This is not God's utopia. You actually think you actually got people that actually believe that the Most High is going to come down in America and make America great again. Mm. That's <laughs> over with. Right. That's not going to happen. Right. The Most High is bringing thy king. Let me just say it this way: The Lord's prayer says, "Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done mm-hmm. in this earth as it is in heaven." Mm-hmm. So God's kingdom coming on this earth, and there's a kingdom here already. Two kings can't sit on the same throne. Right. So the destruction got to happen to this kingdom in order for God's kingdom to be on this earth. So, so you in the, you in that you in that time period right. now. That's why you're seeing the decay and the decadence and the and the demoralization. That's why you see that going on now. So, Dick, I was just going to say, so a pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America ain't going ain't to help you right about now. Mm, no, <laughs> no, no. I know people are trying to fight for it, and I, I understand it, but my, but mainly this message is to our people. Our people are not to get caught up in this foolishness, okay? Our, our salvation is coming near, and that's what we need to be preparing for, okay? This is our captivity. We are not to join into this thing, and that's why in the previous uh, uh, uh episodes of our program we kept telling you this you're not to be unequally joined with those that are not about god that's not you you were not brought over here for that okay you israelites it's time for you to wake up time for you to wake up bible book of our fathers coming at you okay so um let's get into it um let's open up with we read that let me just go into what i want to go into and get this lesson going on um, like I said, we're speaking about the decadence of this kingdom. Uh, this kingdom stood by and watched and prospered off of our destruction. Now the chickens are coming home to roost as a result of what they have done. You may ask yourself, what chickens? What chickens are we talking about? Now, we've heard this statement with Malcolm X when he was talking about um, uh, K- Kennedy, when he said the reason why he was killed, because he was killed as a result of a violent country that brought violence to him. That's the point that he was making in so many words. So basically, that's what's happening in this society now. They have they have butchered our people, did all kinds of evils and and robbery to our people, and that's that stuff is not going to continue to happen in a vacuum. After a while, the 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 dope that was pushed into our communities is going to eventually get to your kids. It's going to eventually go on the outside. Now they got opioids and all kind of other stuff. Mm-hmm. These Edomite kids and all these people are getting strung out all, all of that stuff because mm-hmm. they thought that it was just going to be contained with us, like they mm-hmm. talked about in The right. Godfather. Sell it to the niggers, you know. That's right. what they said in there, yeah. meaning they thought it was going to stay there. That's not how, that's not how reap what you sow works. Right. Okay, you can't continue to do evil to us and think it's going to stay in a vacuum without it eventually leaking out and getting the rest of you. Now you're starting to feel what we've been feeling for centuries. OK, um, let me make this point here, because I mentioned about what chickens, meaning the 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 situations that happened to us is now being moved over uh, to these 
uh, to our oppressors a, a little bit. When I say our oppressors, I ain't talking about the big time elites because they think they're gonna they think they're gonna escape this. I'm talking about the regular peons, what they call the peon, blue collar white right, folks. Right. They're feeling a lot of this. They're finding out that their own government didn't care about them. Mm-hmm. That's what they're finding out. So, uh, primarily in the 1970s, there was a noti- there was a noticeable pivotal period that began a series of social disparities that manifested in our communities through our children. Okay, this is what began to happen. So what were some of the disparities that happened? They brought in the dope. Okay, the, uh, in the 1970s, we saw the flooding of drugs into our communities. We also saw our soldiers that were being drafted, like Muhammad Ali. They were drafting our people to go into the military when we were being called nigger. That's the reason why Muhammad Ali said what he said. He said, them people never called me nigger. What the hell am I going over there for? Right. He said, you're my opposer. You're my problem. So I'm just saying this because, you know, our people don't really learn about recent history. We, You know, you, you ask a lot of our young kids today, they know nothing about these kinds of things right. that's going on now. So I'm just going back just a few decades just to give you a window into what was going on back then. So I just made a, a, a quick note of these things. Like I said, uh, our soldiers coming back from Vietnam, many of them were hooked on heroin while they were there. Okay. So when they came back, the dope pushers were already created because the dope was being pushed into the communities. That's why I mentioned about the Godfather. That made instant heroin dealers, instant dope dealers. I'm coming up now. I grew up in Sardis. Okay. Um, so when these soldiers came back, they were immediate heroin addicts. And they needed to get their fix. And the dope dealers, the heroin addicts, gave them their dope right there. And they were all dying in alleys with needles in their arms and all of that stuff because of overdoses and all kinds. Of, this stuff has been happening to us in the 70s. This is when it began. Okay, let me read on. Um, like I said, newly created Pusher Man. That's the reason why Curtis Mayfield made that song called I'm, uh, I'm Your Pusher. It was resulting from these times here. That's what this was talking about. Pusher Man, uh, who are allowed to receive the dope for a ready market of our destroyed people looking for escapism. So when our people came back after seeing all of that gore, gooey, madness, violence, and then they came back, had no jobs, families was already destroyed. Some of the wives that was here was already messed up or going out with other men or whatever. The communities were destroyed before the soldiers even came back. So a lot of them looked for an escape and they went right to the pusher man to get their fix. Okay. So our people were destroyed in trying to escape the ugly reality. Hey, you don't went to war. You came back and there's a war right there in your own for, uh, in your own footstep, in your right. own doorstep. Right. That's crazy. But this is what we had to endure. Okay? Not only that, in the 70s, welfare laws were used to destroy our succeeding families. Because at the moment when the welfare laws was being put in was being enacted, we at the moment, the mothers and fathers, they did not uh, clearly see the devastation that was going to evolve because the fathers were being pushed out of the homes. So it was the children that suffered. And when the children grow up without a father, they don't know how to treat women. They don't know how to treat each other. They're brothers. And that's the reason why things have gotten gotten in a terrible vortex of destruction with us as the black and Hispanic people. So we went through this kind of era and America didn't care. Right. They didn't give a damn. Then the jails got built up. You can even you can check that out when you watch that that uh, movie, not a movie, the documentary about the uh, what was it, the thirteenth, what's that thing called? Thirteenth oh, Amendment. The Thirteenth Amendment is that what the name of it was? Yes, sir. Right, the Thirteenth right. Amendment. That yes, sister sir. that made that that thing it was right. on Netflix a yes, while sir. back. She pointed out in in her information, in 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 the video how the how the jail population boomed during the seventies. So it was a direct connection of the more of the of the uh, controlled moral decline and the and the controlled destruction, meaning purposeful destruction that happened to our people during the seventies. While at the same time, all of this destruction of, of us is going to cause us to turn to crime, going to turn gonna cause us to turn to murder, cause us to to do all kinds of things. Therefore, your prisons are already built. Mm-hmm. Send them to prison, right? And so that's how the prison population got. More boom. Mm-hmm. Now the people, now the daughters are growing up. They got a, they, their father is behind bars. Their, mother, their mothers is all cr- strung up crack. Mm-hmm. 
dealing with four, five, six different men because the father's not there. She's trying to get, she's trying to get by, and she got to do all kinds of, of hoochiness to try to keep a man in her life. This is the kind of stuff that we went through. This is the 70s. I got more for you. Um, the assassination of our leaders in the mid-60s, which led us to the leaderless 70s. Medgar Evers killed. Malcolm X killed. Mm-hmm. Marcus Garvey off the scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, Martin, Luther King. Martin Luther King off the right. scene. Well, uh, uh, I said Medgar Evers. Who was the other? In the Panthers, Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton. All them brothers. Mm-hmm. Okay? If they were about doing it, and there were several others. If they was about trying to do anything to correct the moral decay that was going on with us, they were either politically assassinated, exiled, or straight out murdered. Mm-hmm. So we went through a period of no fathers, basically. No kind of leaders at all. Right. Mm. So that's what led to the absolute destruction of our people. But God had a plan. So yes. you brothers and sisters keep remembering that. Mass incarceration, mass incarceration increased nearly tenfold. I didn't have the exact numbers, but I know the information is somewhat reflecting this because of because of no leaders in the community or in the homes of blacks and Hispanics. No fathers at all. OK, they have most of the fathers, either they're in jail, dead, you know, mm-hmm. or, or strung out on drugs. Right. Totally useless, totally useless. And and in addition to that, the further the further results of miseducation. And the inferior education, which led to us being ill-equipped to compete in an economy uh, for the benefit of black and Hispanic communities. In other words, if we wanted to try to do something to bring our communities up, we were not given the education enough to know how to do because the, inf- because the, the very education was inferior. Mm-hmm. Separate. We had inferior books, inferior schools. The resources, the resources weren't, there. weren't there. All of that. So all of this led to a total destruction of our people. But at the same time, God had a plan because while this was happening, the Most High was bringing this understanding up in Israel. So mm-hmm. when the scriptures talk about that 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 small remnant, that's what you're looking at, yes. brothers and sisters. The Israelites are here, and we are the ambassadors of God. And God is going to bring bring going to bring. The uh the power that's gonna resurrect us from these terrible things. Not us. The most high gonna do that. Right. And the angels. We're just his mouthpiece. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So um so we experienced ravages of poverty and destroyed communities and family. We experienced that. We went through all of that. We have a collective injury like I talked about uh at, at different times. So all of these all these acts of covert war was allowed to flourish when it came to us. Was allowed. Not realizing that one incident of virulent injustice will not, will not continue to remain isolated from, uh, in our communities only. No, it's going to pan out. It's going to begin to reach everybody. That's what I, point I was making earlier. The resultant decadence, which will come to the rest of America as a result of America's avarice, meaning excessive greed, will, con- will eventually bring those... Uh, realities that we dealt with, now you will begin to deal with them, okay, in due time, okay? And the time has come. Now a so-called white America is starting to feel the effects of, of a oppressive, a just fascist regime. regime. Mm-hmm. They're starting to feel that. We've been feeling it, but now you so-called white people are feeling it now. OK, but that's not our lot. I'm just saying this, but I'm, I'm mainly saying this here for our for our people to not worry about that. Your job as the Israelites is to focus in on your salvation because the most High is bringing a close to the system. We might I don't know how many years left. This is not one of those things where we're going to be trying to give dates and all that. But the time we're in the season, we're in the season, brothers and sisters. That's all I'm saying. We're in the season. Anything y'all want to add before I go on? I'm going to get my next scripture. The only thing I wanted to add was when you when you talk about when they came back from war, mm-hmm. the things that they saw, you know, that the, the, what they would call now the PTSD, mm-hmm. they were drugging them up even there in yeah. those areas. They were they were already getting them hooked on right. heroin and morphine mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Oh, so yeah. it was a it was a the opioids. Yeah, exactly. So it was a, a quick translation when they came back over here. 
to to get it on the street. Well, exactly. That's exactly what they happened. set it up. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And they use some of your favorite drug dealers that they that they bring up in the in yeah, the movies, movies and all right, of that. You know, right, and right. don't 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 think that they were the only ones. They were just using them. But you, no dope could get inside this country without the ex, without the the absolute hands of right. this government. I'm gonna just say it that way. I know we, I know we gonna face some heat for saying that, but no, no drugs could be sold without their direct involvement. Mm-hmm. Right? Cannot be sold if they can find you for owing a dime on your IRS. Mm-hmm. They can find out who. You know what was funny? I'm about to get into. Uh, I'm about to mention something. I think it's further down. I don't, I don't want to jump the gun. My next scripture gonna be Lamentations four, so I can stay on track. Okay. Uh, Lamentations the fourth chapter. Um, you know. The people are so people's minds are so psyched out is that they cannot figure out, and I said this before, how is it that a nine year old kid in Harlem, in Chicago, or Watts, California, can find the heroin man, can find the pusher man, and the FBI can't find him? <laughs> the CIA can't find him. They're all over the place. The crack vials. I was, in Harlem I used to see the crack vials all over the place. I said, where the hell are these li-? and these Negroes ain't making them? They have manufactured crack vials be all over the streets. All over. All over the place. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, how in the, where do these damn things come from? Because it's allowed. That's the point. Okay? So yep. people ain't figured that out yet. How is it that a young child, a young kid, he can find the dope man, but the, but the, but the authority can't find him? So there's your corruption. And they right can there. find Saddam Hussein. They can find Saddam in the, Saddam, in the, in, right. in the sand in the right. ground. There you go. There you go right there. Damn, you just messed right. it all up. Right. right. Jesus Christ. Right. Dick, I got wow. a scripture go right ahead, quick. Man. If I can go ahead. Go ahead. You done messed my head up. Job right. 4 and 8. <laughs> go ahead. Job 4 and 8. It just speaks <laughs> what we um, topic what we're dealing just, with. Just about took this it to the wickedness. next level. Yeah, go ahead, Captain. Mm-hmm. Job chapter 4 and verse 8. Uh-huh. Even as I have seen. Even as I have seen. Or we have seen in what you bringing out, Deke. Read on. They that plow iniquity. Uh-oh. Read on. And sow iniquity. Wickedness. Start over again. I want to make sure that's good and clear. Even as I have seen, uh-huh. they that plow iniquity mm. and sow wickedness reap the same. That's it. Mm-mm. That's Mm-mm. it. They mm. reap the same. <laughs> you see that? So chickens coming home to roost. That's, that's basically it. what you just right. brought out. So Malcolm wasn't always crazy. He knew something. Nah, he wasn't crazy. He did talk to uh, to <laughs> some of our uh, forefathers in this truth, I mean, yes. uh, the patriots that started this truth in the uh, in the 60s and 70s, Malcolm did have some conversations with him. So mm-hmm. he knew a little something. Mm-hmm. He, knew so, he knew a little something. Let's read that. We're in the book of Lamentations. Because now white, now white America, meaning blue-collar America primarily, because I know there's some whites that ain't, they, they ain't really feeling any of this because they're out there and they're out there in their lofty, uh, um, uh, what was those words? Um, Epicureanism. Uh, right. Epicureanism. Yeah. Uh, in their debauchery, degeneracy, and in their self-indulgence, right. they're lofty above these particular things. But the Most High say, he go, if, they, "If they dig down into Carmel, mm. he going I mean, up. What is this? I'm trying to remember. If they, they dig down into the ground, they gonna find them. I forget the words that they use. No matter where they hide, okay, he gonna hunt them from every hole oh, and every yeah, hill yeah, and all yeah, that, yeah, yeah. and he right. gonna bring them out. Okay, right. so they're not gonna get away. Right. No matter if they try to go to the moon, right. he gonna get them. <laughs> they ain't not escaping. Okay, yes. read. What verse you want, D? Uh, verse 21. Lam- Lamentations. Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 21. Now, the reason why I'm reading this again, because like I said, uh, so-called white America, uh, blue-collar America primarily, so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about, because they, they're catching it now, are beginning to face what we've faced for centuries. Read. Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, because when you was at your pinnacle laughing at the Negro, taking advantage of the Negro, living high off the Negro and off the Hispanic and off the Native American Indians, let me not leave them out because all of the tribes caught hell up under these people. You're on stolen land talking about something you're an American. That, that's, a, that's a crime in itself. Go ahead. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom. That dwellest in the land of Uz. Go ahead. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. The cup of trembling. The cup. The cup of all those chickens that I talked about earlier. All of the robbery and the and the and the mis and the abuse that happened to us is going to happen to you too. 
Read that again, that statement again. The, the cup the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Go ahead. Thou shall be drunken. Thou you shall drink of this cup that has happened to us. And then you're starting to feel you're getting the 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 the, uh, the, the before shocks now. You're starting to get the wave before the full thing hit. You're starting to feel the unsettlement in your system because your politicians and your leaders are robbing it. Go ahead. Thou shall be drunken, and thou and and shall make thyself naked. And you shall be made naked with nuclear destruction. That's what the Most High is talking about. You're gonna the ultimate destruction is gonna come from weapons that are already made. Okay, your 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 brothers overseas, your Russians and all of the, and the different uh uh. Europe, so-called European allies and brothers, they all got weapons pointed here. And they got weapons pointed at each other. God caused that thing to happen. So that's going to be the ultimate destruction, okay? And we're going to be going home at the same time, you that's brothers right. and sisters that repent and don't get caught up in this foolishness. I'm talking about some of you protesting. You better stay shelter in place. <laughs> you better do that. <laughs> that's the time to do it. Stay the hell away from that daggone thing. Uh, so, now... Um, the Most High said that they shall be made naked. So give me the 22nd verse now, okay? Lamentations. Because what has happened, like I said, America has drunken upon the Israelites by all types of, of destruction that they put upon us and live deliciously at the expense mm. of our destruction and, at the, and live deliciously at the expense of our sanity. Wow. The things that was done to us made us crazy. Drove us out of our minds. And these are the direct results of the oppressions and the repression and the destructive practices and the dope and the joblessness and the, and the straight out murder. You see in your sons and daughters get murdered. That's going to drive you crazy. And they benefited from that. Go ahead. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 22. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. O daughter of Zion. You hear what the Bible says? The iniquity of our what? The, the, the what? The, the punishment. The punishment. I'm sorry. The punishment of our iniquity is what is accomplished. So the Most High said, basically, what this is saying, because Christ died for us. That's the point. The reason why our iniquity, our punishment for our iniquities is accomplished is because Christ died for us. That what that gave us to wipe the that gave us a chance to wipe the slate clean. Only the Israelites received that atonement. Okay, so the Most High's dead. That's what he did for us. Read it again. Verse 22. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. We were punished. We were brought over here in slavery to serve captivity. But in our punishment, Christ said, I want you to remember that I died for you. So although you're being punished, you have a chance to repent of the sins that you've done against me. And once you do that, I'm going to take you from the land of your enemies and give you your own land. And I'm going to have everyone that put their nasty hands on you to serve you in slavery. That's right. That's what the most, that's the promise that we have. Read it again. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion. That's the nation of Israel. Come on. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. We ain't never going into captivity ever again. So that's just something to just rejoice about. Even if I die in this captivity, I know I ain't coming back to this no more. That's good. I, I, I hope I don't come back to this no more. Come back <laughs> as a newborn baby. And stay with, I was like, wait a minute. Damn, we just still, left no, here. I just left here. No, I don't, uh, uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to see this no more. Man. Try to crawl back Try in. Try to crawl back yeah. in. Say, no, nah, man. Let me let get me back in that, back. Get back in that oven. Yeah. <laughs> Make me come back a little later. Hey. <laughs> Read that again. <laughs> the punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion, the Israelites. Go ahead. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will no more carry us away into captivity. Our captivity is over after this. This is our last captivity. Oh, like the book crazy. of Daniel say, Daniel said, hitherto is the end of the matter. <laughs> Meaning that's what the whole Bible is about. That's right. our last captivity, brothers and sisters. Yes. Go ahead. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. Now he's giving it to shift it all on them. Uh-oh. It's their time to get it now. Uh-oh. And the Most High is bringing the effects. The season is here. <laughs> right. Okay. They're starting to feel a little bit of it now. And you so-called Negroes talking about something, you're going to join hand and try to go out there with them. You're going to do nothing but die. You stay away from that. Mm. Stay away from that. That is not your thing. Okay? Uh, That was it on that, right? He will, he will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. The Mosai said that he will visit the iniquity, O daughter of Edom. 
Now, let me say this because I already know somebody might try to get slick. The sins that Edom has committed is the trespass that he did against Israel. That ain't, that ain't talking about the laws of the Most High particularly because let's get that and let me clear that up. Let me get it for a so-called, what's the name? Vocab. He tried to say, oh, the Edomites sinned, so they, they, the law was given to them too. Give me that uh, Psalms 147, uh, 7, 19 and 20. Watch this. <clears throat> say vocab, huh? Yeah, I just had to mention that little, little worm <laughs> just for a second. Just for a second. I, I don't spend much time on, on, right. on, on that. But just, uh, you know what I want, right? I'm looking for something else, too. But go ahead. Read that. Psalms chapter 147 and verse 19. Mm -hmm. He showeth his word unto Jacob. He showeth his word unto Jacob, not to the Edomites. He didn't show his word to nobody else but Israel. Go ahead. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. His statutes and his judgments only was given to the Israelites. Go ahead. He have not dealt so with any nation. He has not dealt so with his Bible. That's what it's really talking about. Because where's his judgments and his commandments and statutes found at in the Bible? He has not dealt so with any nation at all except the Israelites. That's, That's what he's right. telling you. Go ahead. And as for his judgment. And as for God's judgments. They have not known them. So they don't deal with the prophecies or nothing. The Most High ain't giving them none of that. All this information belongs. Jacob is the former of all things. That's the point that is making there. Now, give me Obadiah. Let me show you the sin that Edom did. It ain't that he broke the laws that we, we were held up because we broke God's laws. That's written in Deuter that's written in the in the Torah, the right. first five books. That's the that's the scriptures. What it's talking about with us. That wasn't given to Esau, but this is the reason why Esau is gonna get jammed up. Obadiah, tenth verse. Obadiah gonna try to gonna try to wiggle him when with Israel. No. This is the reason, this is the sin that you committed. They ain't got nothing to do with the laws of the Most High, particularly like he gave to us. Read. Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 10. All the sinners of my people. No, no, no. Obadiah, brother. Obadiah. That's oh, what I I'm said? Sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. Okay. Obadiah. 10 verse, I think it is. O right. Obadiah it. chapter 1 and verse 10. There's only one chapter. There's only one, one chapter. But I get it. Go ahead. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. You hear what the Bible says? For thy, this is the reason why you're getting it. Mm -hmm. Read it. For thy what? For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. Judgment. Go ahead. And, th and thou shall be cut off forever. And thou shall be cut off forever. Read on. There's more. And the day that thou stoodest on the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away, captive his forces. This is when the nations came and robbed our temples and all of that. Read. And foreigners entered into his gates. And foreigners entered into our gates. It's particularly talking about Babylon when the Babylonians came in. These same Edomites, when you read the book of Psalms 137, when it says, give me that, oh, daughter Edom, real quick. I didn't want to jump, jump into that too much, but let me just hit that. Let me just hit that real quick. 137. Raise it. Raise yes, it. That, that's the scripture there. That's what this is talking about. Verse seven. Psalms chapter 137 and verse 7. Remember, O Lord. The children of Edom and the, the, the children of Edom, the Edomites, the mm -hmm. same people we read about in Obadiah right. and the same people that we read about in Lamentations, which we're going back in a second. Read. Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it. Meaning destroy it, destroy it. Even to the foundations thereof. Destroy their temples, destroy their women, destroy their sons, kill them all. Mm. That's oh. what they were saying. O daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon. That's, that's where we're at now. Go ahead. Who, who are to be destroyed. And that's what we was reading in Lamentations. The most I say going to bring total devastation to these people here. Go ahead. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. So when these people are getting it, you ain't supposed to be on the front lines talking about, talking about helping them out. Leave them alone. That's God doing his business. Please stay out of that. We ain't advocating no violence. Don't get me wrong. We ain't advocating nothing. But you can stay out of that. You don't get tied up into that thing. You got your own problems. You got your own things that you need to deal with. Worry about your salvation. When they were in their salvation, they weren't trying to give none of it to you. Mm, right. Okay. Go back to where we was at. In Obadiah, there was a little bit more. Give me the 15th verse. Go back. Go to Obadiah. Give me verse 15. Obadiah, verse 15. Still talking about the same people and the nations. Come on. For the day of the Lord is near up upon all the heathen. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the nations. Go ahead. As thou has done. As thou has done to the Israelites. That's uh -oh. what it's talking about. 
It shall be done unto thee. It shall be done unto the nations. Go ahead. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. I'm not looking at the chapter. Where's the part where it says that thou hast drunken upon my holy mountain? Verse 16. Read. Verse 16, for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain. How did they drink upon us? Castration, welfare laws, the same chickens that we were talking about earlier. Right. All of the evils that they have done to us. And I just make the point from the 60s, the 70s, all the way up to now. I just use that. I ain't even talk about slavery. I ain't even talk about the rape of our boys. Our boys were raped. Mm. Our young girls was raped. Right. They did medical experiments with our sisters and, this mm. guy, and using her as, guy, as a guinea pig. For for right. their for their gyne, uh, gynecological uh, right, exper- right. Uh, uh, advances now. Right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to get the words right. right, right. They, they use her for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So none of that's going to go untouched. Most I got all that written down. Oh. Yeah, something, Eli. I want to I, I want to I wanna back you up, Deke, because yeah. this is what you're touching on is you can go through all of that, Deke, all that history mm-hmm. of the trials and tribulations that the the struggle that we've had in this captivity. Right. And they so easily pass it aside because they're looking at at a at an Edomite God, right? And not realizing that God had already said that we was going to go through these things, right? But there was only a certain point that you're supposed to punish somebody, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, give me Amos, yeah, uh, one verse nine. You know, the Most High is the one who who gives the punishment. He he used Esau for a sword, and then he also said, now once I'm done with you, mm-hmm. now I got to punish you for what you did. Right. Read what you got. Amos chapter 1 and verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, for three transgressions of Tyrus, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they delivered up the whole captivity to Edom. They gave us all to Esau. Go and, ahead. And remember not the brotherly covenant. And when... Esau, he was Jacob's right brother. There you go right there. He didn't remember the brotherly covenant. Right. So that brotherly covenant, that when uh, I think that kind of goes into what the brother posted as far as the question. We're answering that question now. Right, right. This is what happened. This is how they dealt with us. This is history. Jump to verse 11. Mm-hmm, Amos chapter 1 and verse 11. Thus saved the Lord for three transgressions of Edom, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof. God said, I am not, I have to punish you. Right. Go ahead. Because he did pursue his brother with the sword, mm-hmm. and they cast off all pity. He had no mercy. When we was in captivity, he right. had no mercy None for all. us. Right. None, None at whatsoever. All. Go ahead. And his anger did tear perpetually. Go ahead. And he kept his wrath forever. And that's what they don't understand. Right. Is that they're going to hate us forever. Right. Exactly. That Perpetual is not going to change. That's right. not going to change. Right. Exactly. That's, that's, that's a heavy That's a heavy deal. Mm-hmm. Now, you made reference to a question that we was asking, right? Yes, Can sir. Can you put that up there just so the people in the uh, audience know who we're talking about? Because there was, you know, at times we can, you know, the brothers will post questions on the uh on the videos, which is, you know, I found uh, it's beneficial because we can somewhat deal with it because we're still trying to get our apparatus set up where we can deal with live callers and so forth. But uh, this is what we were, this is what uh, Officer Eli was referring to when he was making the point about uh, the covenant, right? What would you, what, yeah, how would the you, brotherly, co- the, I think it's question number two. Okay, so let me just read this real quick and mm-hmm. just so the brothers can see it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I appreciate the truth uh, being spoken boldly. And love you, brothers, this is what he says. He says, I have two questions. Jesus told his 12 disciples not to go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans. However, uh, after the Lord rose from the dead, see, 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 when it says the Gentile, let me just back up there. When it says, when he told his 12 disciples not to go to the Gentiles or the Samaritans, that was still talking about the Israelites. That was not talking about the actual nations, okay? Our people was called Gentiles, and the, and the people that was in Samaria was the northern kingdom. So, but that's some history that you got to learn. But there's videos out on this. Uh, Bishop, many of the deacons, even captains, some officers right. have done videos on this very subject. So you can actually uh, find this information. Just just go IUIC Jews and Gentiles, and the information will come up. Okay, in, in terms of that question, he said the first. Uh, he said the first question: Are you saying the children of Esau will not be saved? That's what we read, not the Bible. Okay, but the reason why that's even coming up is because the churches have confused our people in thinking about John 3.16. The world that Christ died for was the world of Israel. You have a sea world, animal world, 
wide world of sports. The wide world of sports don't pertain to the animal world. So the world that Christ died for was the world of Israel. Right. Okay, And that's all throughout the scriptures. Christ said, love. he says, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. That's Jesus speaking himself. Mm -hmm. Okay, I spake openly to the world, them that resort in the synagogue, the Israelites. That's what he was talking about there. So the world was talking about the society of Israel. That's what he meant. Okay. So uh, Esau is not a part of that. Romans 9, 13 tell you, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. That's God speaking himself. So well, people's confused because the, 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 the heroin needle that you get in Christianity causes your brain not to work right. Okay? That's what the problem is. Um, second question. Second the second question. question was what? Second question. He said, I hear you saying the brothers need to turn from... Uh, being against each other and love each other. That's correct. That's true. That's what the scriptures say. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Thy neighbor. Thy neighbor. It ain't talking about being evil and wicked to the other nations, but you're supposed to love your people as you love yourself. All right. of the nations do this. That's a, that's a natural right. Mm -hmm. To love you doesn't mean that you have to, be, to, to, to incite violence or hatred towards anybody else, but you have so much love for your people, you ain't got no time to mess with nobody else. Leave them alone like they left us alone. So what it say? Um, he said, are you saying that the brothers uh, should not, wait, let me say, are you saying the brothers should not love those who uh, who God hated? So there we go again. But it's it's, it's an understandable uh, point there because when you, you got to look at that word hatred, these people are against God. Leave them alone. That's the point. We're supposed to deal with the love of the nation of Israel. That's our focus. Our focus is not about hating on anybody. We tell you that on every lesson. Go ahead. That's a loaded question yeah, because I know it is. Yeah. I know it is. When he when it's saying, uh, are you saying that the brothers should not love those who God hated? Mm. That's it's God hated who? Right. God right. hated Esau. Right. So that's why it's a loaded question right. because it's he all, already knows. He already right. knows the answer. Right. right. It's it's all it's all going back to what we was talking about. Is that the wickedness in this world is confusing our people into thinking that we are all one, right? Mm. And they're believing that banner that that the Constitution gives that uh, all one. Uh, un, what, what was it, uh, Nation? Nation under under God, uh, under, right? They're confusing that, and and they're trying to use the Bible to justify God hated them. We didn't. Right. We don't and got nothing. To right. Do with that ain't got nothing to do with us. So don't put that on us. Okay. We're just following what God said. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the Most High said that. That that we are to live peaceably, if possible, by all men. Right. Okay. So that's that's our message to you. But God says, mm -hmm. God says what He says there. So don't get it twisted. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So that's it on that. So like I said, uh, if you're sincere about what you're bringing out, you can learn about that. We got several videos that deal with that. But uh, we again, like the disclaimer says, we are not about advocating any hate or 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 uh violence or any or anything uh that is unlawful against anybody okay uh dig if i could just just because yeah. that kind of bothered my spirit a little bit let me yeah. get isaiah 45 and 17 so yeah. yes. you know let's just clear it up for some of those that may be watching that may right. not have this understanding right and this question here posed a little confusion to you you mm -hmm. know Mm -hmm. So Isaiah 45 and 17. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 17. Uh -huh. But Israel shall be saved who in the shall, Israel shall be? Israel okay. shall be saved in the Lord uh -huh. with an everlasting salvation. Okay. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. Israel is that world without end. Right quick, Leviticus 19, verse 17 and 18. Okay. Israel is that world that he speaks about. Just like Dick said, we're talking about the sports world, the sea world. You know, there's different different, uh, uh, different races of world, okay? Just, we haven't gotten that understanding. Through Christianity, they have not given us the proper understanding of this Bible. But the prophets of God are here on the earth today to bring that proper understanding. And I'm sure a lot of y'all miss the prophets of God out there on the streets now, you know, because of this COVID-19 that's going on. I know y'all would love to see us out there bringing forth this truth now. You miss it. What you going to do when the prophets of God are gone? Read that right quick. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor Read and on. not suffer sin upon him. Read on verse 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy the people. The children of thy Thy people who we're talking about. We're not dealing with the other nation. We're talking about Israel. Read on. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That's I, it. 
That's the answer right there. Thank you. Let me read one more scripture, and then we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to start hitting these videos. Uh, give me the book of Revelation, chapter 1. <laughs> chapter 1, read the first verse, and then give me verse uh, four, 14. Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Stop. The revealing of Jesus Christ. So if we want to know what Jesus Christ is about, this chapter reveals Jesus. Now let's see part of the revelation. Give me the 14th verse. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. That's a black. That's a man with woolly hair. Jesus Christ had woolly hair. So wait a minute. What kind of what kind of emotion was shown to portray Christ as a white as a so-called white man with blonde hair? Was that love? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ask them about hate and love and all of that. Right. Bring that question to them. Read it again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Go ahead. As white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. And the whites of Christ's eyes was red because he drank wine when you read the prophecy. Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. And Jesus Christ had feet that was like fine brass, brown. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. And his feet looked so dark it looked like they were burnt in a furnace. So here you're talking about a, a, a very dark-skinned man that looked like burnt brass with woolly hair. Mm. That's a black man, so you can understand. That's a black man. So the question is, where is, where is the uh, love in keeping Jesus as the Bible describes him? Mm-hmm. Bring that question to them. Don't talk about us talking about advocating hate. We don't advocate hate. We advocate truth. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's what we advocate. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm just putting that out there just in case your mind is right. going that way. Right. Well, that's the wickedness that yeah, you're talking you go. about. So the, we got we got to, we got to deal with these things. So, uh-huh. brothers and sisters, I imagine at this time we're going to take a break and we'll be back in 2 3 minutes. Shalom. Stay tuned. We got more for you. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel. 34 times the Booster Club has been called upon and 34 times they've answered. Join the team today and help send the prophets around the world. 12 tribes worldwide. Shalom. I can't get enough for this word. Call me library. All you do is talk. I tell them read. I'll be your ball bearer. As long as my hands clean, I'm going to teach. I let the laws tear. You rebuck your doctrine. Can't believe I even fell for it. No top models, no need for worries, cause God got us. See, masculinity need to be shown to Pharrell. And all of you that's cross-dressing would be dressed to be killed. Apollo Creed, but I'm hitting like I'm holy field. You counting sheep, but you the high lean, the type to flee. It's for the meat, when the battle won't, they gnash their teeth. I can't believe I even fell for their hypocrisy. Like it or not, it's Kwame Yasharala. Laws attached to the brain, a dubla obligata. We are not the same over here, we walk with giants. Ten toes down, with the clay is mixed with iron. I can't get enough for this word, call me library. All you do is talk, I tell them read, I'll be your ball bearer. As long as my hands clean, I'm a teach, I let the laws tear. You rebuck your doctrine, can't believe I even fell for it. Real eyes, when they visualize, they can see. Realize that the real eyes of our children seek to see, need to see us be great. Teledevices push so much self-hate. That's why the love in our community is dying at a rapid rate. The wells of our love have gone dry. How many years of love and hip hop twerking tip top dip and bit bop will we allow to go by? We need visions to replenish the thoughts in our minds. People without a vision perish, so cherish the blessings in IUIC, watch and read. The blessings in 
IUIC watch and read. But don't just watch but read. The history that the visions display. Open up your Bibles and press play. The visions that you need are at your fingertips every day. No subscription fees or overpriced snacks, but the code has been cracked. The profits are back. The revolution will not be televised through telelies, but in the eyes of those who can see. Our future is available for us to see. IUIC, giving the vision for free. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. Praise to the Most High. Praise to the Most High. Continuing on, uh, one of the things that I want to mention is about what the, uh, just sort of sits in the commercial with the IUIC Watch and Read. And that is uh, geared to our children because our children have learned nothing about themselves, been taught to hate themselves in religion and schools and images on television. So we have learned a whole diet of, of, of hate. We have learned that. OK, so us trying to uh, reverse that and teach our people the absolute facts and the truth. Watch and read mean read the Bible and watch what we're teaching out of the Bible to correct the the self hatred that we have, right. and, and you know and, and within ourselves. So we ain't got no time to to worry about uh, somebody else. Like Malcolm X said, "Here you are, way out in the middle of the ocean, can't swim, and you worried about somebody in the bathtub can't swim." And you got problems as big as the ocean, and you worried about what's happening in some man in his bathtub. We got so much problems. I don't think people got that. People didn't figure that one out. <laughs> you know, the, our, our problems is as big as the ocean, and the people you're talking about loving, their problems is only big as the bathtub. Mm. <laughs> you and you can't swim. You need to worry about your own self. Okay. No way talking about telling anybody to uh, to deal with that to to uh, inflict violence on anybody, but. You, we got so much problems, we need to focus our energy on repairing the damage that was done by these same people. Right. Okay, so let us uh, get hip to the real wisdom of the Most High. Let's, let me continue on. Like I said, I want to get into these videos, okay? So we're, we're living in the age of decadence in this country, and that's something that, that a lot of people are going to feel bad about. A lot of people don't want to see the system go. Okay, that they talk about loving those that have expressed pure hatred, lynchings, burnings, castrations, abortions, drugs, dope, uh, <laughs> jails, you name it. It's right. been happening to us. First fired, last hired, all that happened to us, and we weren't about loving them. But when it comes to us loving each other, we don't want to do that. Mm. Now I know the brother pointed it out in the in the in the video that we should love each other. That's a good thing, but that's what we need to put our focus at. We ain't got no time to worry about anybody else. All right, so um. Let me get on with it. So like I said, the chickens are coming home to roost to the society here. Okay, now the Edomites are starting to feel, feel the, uh, the oppression. Okay, um, I, and here I'm going to make this point. It says uh, Americans, this, uh, I made this note uh, earlier today. Americans, so-called um, uh, Americans, their so-called freedoms and immunities, which were once guaranteed to them as real citizens, are being eroded through mind-bending controlled media that only serves the elite rich families or the 1%. That's what's going down now. And these people know that. 
Okay. That's their problem. That ain't got nothing to do with us black people. We need to, get, like the scripture said, gather ourselves together. Okay. That's, that's what we need to be doing. Don't worry about the other people. They ain't worry about you. You don't worry about them. That ain't hatred. That's common sense. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's biblical sense. Right. Uh, now, now, they're, now they're facing jobs and factories closing up. Their wages went down as a result of corporate greed. Many have forgotten about Enron. They forgot all about that. That was white people robbing white people. Mm-hmm. Totally. Wiped out millions of dollars in savings. Damn. One woman, I remember watching the documentary. I ain't going si- to segue. Woman had d- damn near a million and five in her account. Mm. When they finished robbing her, Ken Lay and all of those dudes that, that robbed Enron, she didn't have enough to buy a used car for $1,300. They wow. robbed, they took all her money. Okay? Wow. So that's the kind of robbery that goes on. Okay? So that's them doing it to each other. That's that debauchery. That's that, uh, that's that um, decadence. Mm. That's the worm that is spread under them. That's, that's not, and the Most High is bringing that, okay? And he's trying to wake you black and Hispanic people up before he dropped the boom. Not only that, the deregulation of, of companies and corporations, which were put in place to guarantee protection of the blue-collar uh, white Americans, that's gone. The unions, that, uh, the unions were attacked uh, which also contri- which contributed to blue collar workers being thrown out of work, uh, and uh, but they said that they were done. Th- the reason why they said they had to get rid of the unions because they said that they need to be able to compete globally. Mm-hmm. So they said that we can't compete if we're still paying you these high wages. Mm-hmm. Then their, their their relationship over the earth got nothing to do with you, but so called uh, white people. Uh, fell up under the uh, wrath of that as well by their own. That ain't got nothing to do with you black folk. Because we always caught hell, regardless of which way the economy went. So don't get it twisted. Um, He's also faced with, he's viewing his government as turning against them. You got these hardliners, these patriots that's going out here buying all kinds of weapons. That's going down now. You don't realize that that this is a fascist system. We're going, as I go on down, you're going to see that. Okay. Um, the family members, their family members now is in psych and psychiatric confinement. Mm. They're experiencing an increase in, in, uh, family violence and, and an increase of incest rape in their own families. Okay. That's what's, what's going on now with them because their own system is bringing hell on them. Okay. Those glory days are gone. I don't know if y'all know that, but th- you, this system ain't never going to get back to the good old days. That's over with. The most high is bringing an end to it. And the, sec- and the secular cause is avarice and insatiable greed because these people are, are greedy. Okay. Mm-hmm. So when you see them protesting, let them protest. Leave them alone. Let them go out there and protest because they have a reason to do that because this is their quote unquote government. Let them do their thing. But you, you need to prepare for your kingdom. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 6, verse 7. Here comes the, the video. Get ready to come up now. Watch this. It's getting ready, getting ready to hit you in the head now. Bring you to some reality. Second Ezra chapter six, verse seven. Because like I said, you black and Hispanic and Indians, you Israelites, you need to be focusing on, on your salvation. Don't worry about the other people. They didn't worry about you. You don't worry about them. I know some people don't like that, but I'm, I'm at, I don't care. The truth got to go out. And out. Whether, you can, whether you can digest it or not, that's your problem. That ain't my problem. My problem is to give you what the Bible says. Right. Okay, Medicine Read. don't taste good. That's right. Mm-hmm. Come on. Second Read. Ezra chapter six and verse seven. Then answered I and said, what shall be the pardon asunder of the times? All the prophets wanted to know when is our kingdom coming. That's basically what he's asking. Mm-hmm. The disciples in the New Testament asked the same question. When shall these things be? Habakkuk was asking the question. Isaiah was asking the question. All the prophets, Daniel, they all was asking, when are we going to, the, the, the apostles in the right. book of Acts, they asked, Lord, art thou at this time come to give the kingdom to Israel? We all wanted our kingdom. Mm-hmm. What is the hell wrong with our people today? Mm-hmm. They drunk. That's what's wrong with them. But read that thing again. Then answered I and said, what shall be the parting asunder of the time? What shall be the parting asunder? What is the sign that I should look for to let me know that our kingdom is coming? Come on. Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that follow Because it? I want to know when, I, when our rulership going to begin so I can get the hell out of captivity. That's what Ezra is complaining about. Go ahead. And he said unto me. And the Mosai is going to answer Ezra. Go ahead. From Abraham unto Isaac. Now he's giving the clues. Come on. When Jacob and Esau were born of him. So he wanted, the Mosai wanted Ezra to focus on departing asunder of the times. This is what he wants. He wants him to look at the transition point. He said, I'm going to give you a clue. 
Look at Esau and Jacob. Go ahead. Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Why? For Esau is the end of the world. Because Esau is the end of the world. So we're at the end of the age. We're at the end of this society. At this society. society. Right. At the system. We, I'm trying to say two words at the same time. We're at the end of this thing now. Okay? So it's time for us to turn to the most high before he dropped the boom. Go ahead. For Esau is the end of the world. For Esau is the end of the world. So who's going to be fighting against Christ when the kingdom of Christ come? Esau, mm. the so-called white man. Then you talking about trying to love him. You're going to die, brother. You're going to die, sister. The Most High set him up for to be his wrath channel. Mm. And you're going to get in the way of that. You better focus on your own salvation. I'm telling you straight. Read. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. And Jacob is the beginning of the world that followeth. So when Esau go down, Israel going to rule. That's why all this is happening. Right. Okay. So now, yes, this present kingdom is becoming evidently fascist. Actually, it has been fascist towards us uh, as soon as we began to voice our dissent against oppression and tyranny. That was against our people and our community. So the minute we began to speak up, we faced uh, uh, tyranny. We faced fascism. We faced repression. We faced oppression. We faced it all to, to silence us, to make us love oppression. Okay. But when we began to speak out against us, uh, against the evils that was happening to us, we faced all kinds of censorship. We faced all kinds of eradication, being maligned, discredited, murdered. Uh, uh, exiled. We faced all of that. Now watch this. So now it's all come back home to roost. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with our first video. Come on, let, let let me show the people about letting you know that it that it, that the chickens is coming to your way now. Watch this. Put the video up there. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Last night on this show, we played you a clip from a nearly hour-long video produced by two physicians in California, Drs. Dan Erickson and Artin Masihi. Likely many of you had already seen it. That video has had more than 5 million views on YouTube. In their presentation, the two doctors presented a flurry of data pointing to what we are currently learning about this virus and how it spreads. They recited pages of government statistics and then interpreted them in light of their own long clinical experience as doctors. At one point, they noted that the newly adjusted death rate in their state of California, which is much lower than anyone expected it to be, and they asked if government officials there should change their policies based on this new science. Watch. We've seen 1,227 deaths in the state of California with a possible uh, incidence or prevalence of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Pause it, pause it, pause does it. Let me set it up because I just threw it on and I didn't really introduce it to you. I just give you the shock value. These are well-respected doctors, okay? And they did research, data research in their own studies and brought up these statistics. Now, I'm not saying that COVID-19 is, is fake or whatever, if people are really dying from this thing, that's not the that's not the point that I'm making. What I am showing you is that when you have a dissenting voice, because that used to happen to us, whenever we said something that that they didn't agree with, they shut us down. I'm showing you that that doesn't just happen to us. That's going to happen to these guys as well. Back it up a little bit to let you know that you're in a fascist system. Back it up just a little bit. Go ahead. Of 4.7 million. That means you have a 0.03 chance of dying from COVID-19 in the state of California. 0.03 chance of dying from COVID in the state of California. Is that, does that necessitate sheltering in place? Does that necessitate shutting down medical systems? Does that necessitate people being out of work? Now, why is he holding? Why is he making the point of does that necessitate, what did he say? Does that necessitate shelter, shelter in place? place? Right. Does that does that necessitate shutting down businesses? What was the other thing that he said? Uh, people being out of work. People being out of work. The reason why he's saying this is because so-called white people are suffering because of this. Their businesses is going in trouble. Right. 
they're they're they they're going out of their mind. People are lose people are going crazy literally. So they're saying is being that the numbers are so low, this is them talking now. They ain't talking about us. I ain't advocating one or the other. I'm just showing you how repression works. The chickens comes to them too. Right. Um he said that does this necessitate all of these things happening with such a minute number? I mean one death is a lot. So don't get don't get it wrong, but they're making the point. They're saying, does does that low number necessitate all of the things that's going on? Because the things that's going on is going to compound into such big problems. Like me and Deacon Asaph had a conversation a few weeks ago about people ain't seen no, like I said, you ain't never getting back to the good old America. That's gone. Right. Because the problems that's going to result from this move that this man is talking about right now is going to be out there. Just like the, when the welfare laws hit us, we didn't see the immediate damage then. But but the result of that led into many of the problems that I talked about earlier. Same thing that's happening here. People are kept, people who are going to end up in the psych units. People are committing suicide. A well famous doctor in New York committed suicide. Wow. After working, I think. Well, we got the article up here um, because of the the ugliness that they're seeing on the front lines of this thing here. So that that. That particular thing in itself is going to cause a ripple effect of damages down the line. People that she knew. Maybe she got children. Maybe there's people that nurses and people that she worked with. These things are going to affect these people. Mm -hmm. So all of these these moves that's happening is going to have an, a, a devastating effect on everybody. So when he says, is it worth it? That's, that's what he's really talking about. He's talking about the problems that's going to come in his community as a result of this. Y'all all right? Y'all right. dig it? It reminds me of the Great right. Depression. Exactly. Exactly. Right. That's exactly what's happening. So let's get let's get the response about back it up a little bit. Back it up a little bit. And yes, let's let let's let's hear. Let's hear uh Tucker Carlson uh from Fox News. He responds with this thing. Come on. Shutting down medical systems. Does that necessitate people being out of work? So whatever your view of the mass quarantines, and maybe you're enthusiastically for them, the questions you just heard are valid questions. In fact, they're critical questions. He we said should that, all it. be asking He them. said that they are critical questions. Why? Because this is the reality that's going to affect the white people. That's what he's talking about. Black people have been already all jacked up with all kinds of problems. So it ain't necessarily talking about us. Right. I'm just, I'm just being real with it. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the reality that he himself is realizing. And that's why they're saying these are legitimate questions, because he's saying that nobody's really thinking about the aftermath of these things being shut mm -hmm. down. OK, go ahead. Those questions, including and especially our policymakers. Mm. But as Dr. Erickson pointed out later in the video, dissent of any kind is no longer tolerated in this country. Mm. Fact based honesty, which is the soul of science, is under attack, even in hospitals. Dr. Erickson described physicians being pressured to classify illnesses and deaths as related to coronavirus, whether now, they believe that to be true or not. Pause it. We're going to go to 216. All right, brothers? In the booth? Come on. Play it. He's, he said, uh, back it up a little bit because I talked, but I did not want y'all to go past the point because I want to go to another video. Back it up a little bit so we can get the whole statement. Brothers and sisters, try to ride with me. We're getting into a lot of the video now. Come on illnesses and deaths as related to coronavirus, whether they believe that to be true or not. We aren't pressured to test for flu, but ER doctors now, my friends that I talk to say, you know, it's interesting, when I'm, when I'm writing up my death report, I'm being pressured to add COVID. Why is that? Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. Pop, boom. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Yeah. So they're being, this is them speaking. I'm not saying yay and nay. This is them speaking. Everything that I'm about to bring out is what they said. I'm just bringing it out. Mm -hmm. He said that uh, He said that they are being told to put COVID-19 right. on it pressure to, yeah. to pressure to inflate the numbers. Right. A lot of people in this country are just dim as hell. And it's a result of the educational system that has, that has been used to dumb people's intelligence down to zero. That's the reason why everything is all messed up. Mm -hmm. People are being... What's the word? Duped and dumbed down Bamboo. where they don't see the obvious. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you something. Mm -hmm. Now go to my next video. There you go right there. Um, you got the time? Start at 1-0. Oh, you got it? There you go. You, you're, on the, you're on the bar. Now, so the point is inflating the numbers. 
This is not new. That's what y'all going to realize. Inflating the numbers is not a new thing. Mm. Hit it. Terrorism. Techniques used by governments to manipulate public opinion in order to further an agenda. Just wanted to read that for you. Go ahead. Look, the CIA has done in this country, what they've done to us is unbelievable. Look at the terrorist acts that have occurred. The CIA behind most, if not all of them. We had the Marine Barracks, their embassy in Kenya. We had Pan Am 103. We had the USS Cole. Uh, we had Oklahoma City. We had the World Trade Center in 1993. That helped the terrorists blow up the World Trade Center the first time. They built the bomb. They, they got the driver's license. The informant, the FBI informant, fellow named Salam, a 43-year-old former Egyptian uh, army officer, he was given the assignment to put the bomb together. And he went to his supervisor, his FBI supervisor, and said, we're going to put a dummy bomb in here, right? And, he, and the FBI supervisor said, no, we're going to put a real bomb. <laughs> FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. Unfortunately for them, there were only six people killed, not enough to pass the legislation. Pause so it. what happened... So we're gonna we got to get that statement again. Oh, wow. He says so in 1993 when they hit, when the World Trade Center was hit the first time, he said only six people died. Then he said that was not enough numbers. Keep that thought in mind. Mm. Back it up a little bit and get that statement. Watch this. <laughs> Fascism. <laughs> Conversations with his handlers. Unfortunately for them. There were only six people killed, not enough to pass the legislation. So what happened is two years later, April 19, 1995, Stop. down comes... <laughs> 1995, the federal building in Oklahoma. Years later. Mm. Six ain't enough. Mm. Listen, back it up. Just get that whole statement. Uh, get, get that whole statement. Go ahead. People killed, not enough to pass the legislation. So what happened is two years later... April 19, 1995, down comes Oklahoma City, uh, Murrah Building, 168 people. Killed. Now, hold it. One year y'all later, noticed that they showed the picture. Some of y'all was baby. around with the fireman yeah. carrying the baby. Yeah, I remember that. They got a clear shot of that. Mm-hmm. That is the work on your mind. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong, because that's a sad thing that happened, but you don't know about the elite hawks behind the scenes mm-hmm. that don't give a damn. Right. <laughs> that's what you don't realize. Go ahead. Later, the anti-terrorism legislation that takes away any of our constitutional rights. And so, civil and, how many people passed? Many, hold it, back it up a little bit. So, it said 168 people were killed in this thing here. Eight people killed. One year later, the anti-terrorism legislation that takes away any of our constitutional rights and civil liberties is passed. So, hold it. That was the now they so they said now we can start to move away the people's civil liberties in the name of terrorism. That's what's happening. That's why that's the fascism. This, when you check the records, this go all the way back to Germany, Nazi mm-hmm. Germany in 1933 with Hitler and the Reichstag. Mm-hmm. The same kind of stuff happened back then. Okay. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Now, this happened in Madrid, Spain, 2004, which is after September 11th. But they're making a point that, 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 that they were doing an exercise at the same time while a quote-unquote real terrorist situation was happening at the same time, which is exactly what happened during 9-11. They said that they were doing uh, 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 scrambling uh, maneuvers and, and some kind of test or something, and they got the test mixed up with the real terror attack, as they said. Go ahead. Hmm. Fascism. In your world now. Wickedness on high places, brothers and sisters. If they'll do this to their own, what the hell you think that they'll do to us? 
because at half past nine this morning we were actually running an exercise for a, over a, a company of a thousand people in London based on simultaneous bombs going off precisely at the railway stations that happened this morning. So I still have the hairs on the back of my legs standing upright. Did you get this quite straight? You were running uh, a, an exercise to see where, how you would cope with this and it happened while you were running the exercise? Precisely. supposed to believe is some kind of coincidence there was also an anti-terrorist drill going on on 7-7 and again just like 9-11 they were talking about attacks on the same targets the same kind of tube stations and exactly the same time as the actual attack happened providing some kind of cover for what must be operations orchestrated in some way by the state So we go on to 111.51, correct? I am absolutely appalled at how much people in this country do not think. We are given to understand that, our, uh, that a guy out there in, up in the mountains financed the most elaborate attack on this country. Do you think some people in a cave, do you think some people in a cave were able to have NORAD stand down? Do you think that people in a cave were able to have all of this happen? And when I think about pause how it, many pause it, pause it. You don't hear black people. That's white folks mad as hell mm -hmm. that the government has flipped on them. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. So don't get mad at us. These films exist. I didn't create them. Right. Go ahead. Americans were killed in New York City. And believing, as I do, that this thing was a setup job, this is a textbook operation that Nazis used, and they've used it over and over again. America has been suckered in one more time. Damn. Mm. Was that it? That's it, right? Now, let's go back to my video with the doctors. Let's go back to that. Had to give you a little bit of that. Hope y'all can grasp what we're showing you. Back it up a little bit because we're going to let this thing play a little bit now. So, now that was, so, he mentioned, he said the same thing that happened in Nazi Germany. I could just, mm, I ain't going to jump the gun because I got that in the in the lesson. Uh, I'll hold on to that. But, should I bring it up now? Yeah? It yeah. ties right yeah, in. It ties right in. It. Put the article up there. We, we get back to the video. I got to bring it up. I got to bring it up. Put the article right there. This is what the man was referring to in the video when he said this has the same tenets as what happened in Nazi Germany. This was put out by the Smithsonian Magazine, so this is not, this is not comic books. These right. are these people writing about this. It says, the true story of the Reichstag fire and the Nazi rise to power. Hmm. Same thing that's going on in this country. Have they, have they taken the power away from the quote-unquote ordinary citizens? They seized it all to themselves, took away people's rights. People, people are just... They took out civics. They took out all kinds of different kinds of uh, histories inside the school system, what people are supposed to understand about their government. They don't even really teach the people that. They don't understand the Bill of Rights and reality, the amendments and things. that All of that stuff is being erased from them. And people have just become, uh, I, what's the word? Uh, uh, used, being uh, just subjects. Rats, bamboos. Yeah, uh, grunts. The new niggers, so you can basically yeah. understand. That's what's happening to them. They've become the new niggers. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, there was a piece that I wanted to mention about. Um, did I skip it? No. All right, it's coming up. Uh, let me read this here. The true story of the Reichstag fire and, an, and the uh, Nazi rise to power. Jump down. I mean, I ain't going to read all this. Uh, just move. No, no, no. Come up, come up, because I want to read what's under that. Hitler, right. It said Hitler used the Reichstag fire in 1933 to seize almost unlimited power. Mm. That's exactly what happened during 9 11. Wow. The Patriot Act came in, and boom, nobody had FEMA came in, Tom Ridge, and all the rest of the people, and everybody's rights was gone in the name of terrorism, in the name of, 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 um, of terrorists, and they always had a boogeyman. We're doing this now. It's COVID-19. In the name of health, nobody has any rights anymore. And that's how they do it. Once, once you put an emergency on it, your rights are gone. All the thing they have to do is just create, create the invent, and your rights are gone. Hmm. Ain't that something? Wow. Now, let me read this here. Come on. 
uh, get down, yeah, right there. Where there's smoke, where there's smoke, there's a fire. And where there's fire, conspiracy theories are sure to follow. There's that word, conspiracy theories. Uh, theories are things that haven't been proven. Mm-hmm. Well, we're looking at history. Things have been proven, so they're no longer <laughs> theories. Right. Okay, at least that's what happened in Germany on February 27, 1933, when a sizable portion of the parliamentary uh, building in Berlin, the Reichstag, went up in flames from an arson attack. Sound familiar? It was the canary in the political coal mine. That's the saying that they have out here. A flashpoint event when Adolf Hitler played on people, on, on, played on, played upon public and political fears to consolidate power, setting the stage for the rise of the of, Nerz, of Nazi Germany. Since then, it's become a powerful political metaphor. Uh, whenever citizens and, and politicians feel threatened by uh, by executive overreach, the Reichstag fire is referred to as a cautionary tale. In other words, that's the reason why they always refer to this, because they feel that's what's happening. The reason why this article exists is because they're making reference to this in relation to what's going on today. Mm. So your leaders know, certain people know that this is fascism that's going on. All right? So it says they make, uh, re- it says, uh, whether the whether it's a con- congressman referring to the fire, uh, to c- fire to question uh, President uh, George W. Bush, a comparison of President Barack Obama. I'm reading from my own paper uh, to Adolf Hitler and numerous pundits uh, ev- invoking the incident to for- to foment fear over President Donald Trump's next political uh, executive order. The German arson is an impressionable, is an impress, an Im, irre, irrepressible uh, political motive. It's become a kind of political shorthand, a reference so familiar that New York Times columnist Paul Krugman only had to use the word fire in his headlines of an inflammatory column about the Trump administration to call up images of national chaos and power grabs. That's what they've done. But this, but the, but the true story of the climatic event is far more complicated than the headline suggests. Germany's, hang on a second. Maybe I should read from the screen. Germany's first experiment with liberal democracy was born of the nineteen nineteen. Uh, Weimar Constitution established after the after the conclusion of World War One. It called for a president elected elected by direct ballot who would appoint a chancellor to introduce le- legislation to members of the Reichstag who were elected by popular by popular vote. The president retained the power to dismiss his cabinet and the chancellor dissolved the ineffective Reichstag. And in cases of national emergency, that's what I wanted to get to, and in cases of, nat- of national emergency, evoked something known as Article 48, which gave the president dictatorial powers and the right to intervene directly in the governance of Germany's 19 territorial states. So, in the, so basically, this part here is what I wanted to talk about. I think y'all see my point. Mm-hmm. It says that in the cases of national emergency, all you have to do is create a national emergency. Just create something. Mm-hmm. And take away the liberties of the people. So these are what is known in some circles as draconian laws that was used to take away the rights of the people. That's what's going on now. Okay. So fascism once again. Okay. I hope y'all understood that. So let's now let's go back to my video. Let's go back to my video. Why are we being pressured to add COVID to maybe increase the numbers and make it look a little bit worse than it is? I think so. So what you just heard, what Dr. Erickson described, is called lying. <laughs> and lying has no place in science ever. It's scary to think it takes place on a large scale in hospitals. He says it does. Viewers of Erickson's video were shocked and transfixed by this. They forwarded the video to friends who forwarded it on to their friends. And Pause suddenly it. millions of people... He said that viewers were transfixed. In other words, they were no longer in the bubble tube. In other words, when these doctors said what they said, it woke people up, and that became a problem. 
This man's video was on YouTube. And I say it was because y'all going to find something out. Back it up a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead. Transfixed by this, they forwarded the video to friends who forwarded it on to their friends. And suddenly millions of people who have spent the last six weeks on a diet of Tiger King and Internet memes <laughs> were watching sober-minded medical researchers reading from charts of statistics. Mm. It's hard to recall a science video taking off like this one did. Not everyone was impressed by it. Some criticized the doctor's policy conclusions. And, of course, that's fair. Decent people have different opinions. We're not entirely certain what the perfect response to this pandemic is. Nobody is certain. There's no objective answer at the moment. At best, we can plod along with open minds and good faith. More informed debate is exactly what we need to make wise decisions going forward. Unfortunately for all of us, informed debate is exactly what the authorities don't want. They want unquestioned obedience, so they're cracking down on free expression. Last night, the doctor's video, the one you just saw, was pulled off of YouTube, the largest video hosting site in the world. It wasn't an accident. YouTube admitted doing it. The company cited a violation of, quote, community guidelines, and they did not apologize. Looking back when all of this is finally over, and it will be, it's likely we'll see this moment, what YouTube just did, as a turning point in the way we live in this country, a sharp break with 250 years of law and custom. Pause it. The two doctors. What he just said there, he said that just get ready for this, because what they just did was set the precedent for this to happen all over the place. Then they've been doing that with us. Mm -hmm. They'll right. say that we did something, this and that, and that whoop, the video yeah. gone. Nobody said nothing. Nobody nobody right. said anything. But right. now that it's happening to them, yeah. now now it's reaching media attention. <laughs> right. But they've been doing this to us. Mm -hmm. Talking about some weird hate group. We ain't advocate no right. thing of hate at all. Try to manufacture mm -hmm. cases against us. Right. To get us, to try to take us off. Mm -hmm. Get Heidi Burbick from, what's her name? from uh, SPLC uh, yeah. to talk, to try to align us right. with being a hate group. And we, and we are against all of that. Right. We ain't telling nobody to hate anybody or doing any kind of wickedness. Right. None of that at all. But they want to be able to censor us. So if they, and, and while they were censoring us, nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. They, 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 and understand what YouTube actually means. A lot of, like I said, people are just dumb when it comes to right. the, comes to the uh, amendments. The First Amendment, freedom of speech and all of that kind of stuff, your freedom of speech and all that mm -hmm. political uh, expression to be able to speak in opposition to uh, tyranny and those kinds of things. That's what that uh, amendment was, was supposed to be about. And YouTube is basically an extension of what is known as public access in your local communities. Before they had YouTube and the Internet, the, the outreach was through public access. Public access gives the ordinary man that has a small business or, you know, a organization that is a benefit to a people in the community. He has the, he or she has the uh, rights to the airwaves to be able to, to bring their particular views in opposition to the big conglomerates. Mm -hmm. Meaning give you a soapbox, as they would say, give you a soapbox so that you can speak. Not just to be in tyranny where you can't say nothing, and the only people that could talk is NBC, is CBS, mm -hmm. is ABC. Meanwhile, you little guys, even though you got something, freedom of speech is not extended to you. Well, that's not what they were trying to say in that document. They were trying to say, no, you have the right to also speak as well. Hence the name YouTube, meaning that it's your television to reach the people. That's the reason why they call it YouTube. I don't have to research it. That's obvious. Right. Mm -hmm. This Speak is supposed to be your television as opposed to in big NBC, big CBS, and this and that and the other. Although they have guidelines because you can't get up there and say some crazy stuff that, that, that cause people to go out and do all kinds of craziness. Mm -hmm. I get that. But then you cannot, at the same time, you cannot try to manufacture incidents to try to mm -hmm. say that the little man is trying to incite violence, is trying to incite hate trying to incite riotous and this and that and the other. We don't do that. Okay? And a lot of people don't do that. But if they say something that is against your particular viewpoint, that is called dissent. And whenever dissent is, is picked up, they're against it. And that's what this man is talking about here. These people see the decadence in their system. That's, what, that's the reason why Tucker Carlson is on this thing. Yes, he's just a host and, and playing an objective part in interviewing the guy, but he's really into this thing. Okay? Back it up and let it play a little bit more. Brothers, we're going to get into a couple more scriptures and, and we're going to keep it moving.
Back it up a little bit, and I'm going to be silent. Just had to get these parts. Come on. We'll see this moment, what YouTube just did, as a turning point in the way we live in this country, a sharp break with 250 years of law and custom. The Two Doctors video was produced by a local television channel in California. It was, in effect, a mainstream news story. The video was not pornographic. It didn't violate copyright or incite violence or commit libel. It didn't break any law. Mm -mm. The only justification for taking it down was that the two physicians on screen had reached different conclusions from the people currently in charge. It was a form of dissent from exactly. orthodoxy. YouTube and its parent company, Google, have now officially banned dissent. The CEO of YouTube admitted that openly. But then we also talk about um, removing information that is problematic. You know, of course, anything that is medically unsubstantiated, so people saying, like, take vitamin C, um, you know, um, take turmeric, like, those are all will cure you. Um, those are the examples of things that would be a violation of our policy. Um, anything that would go against World Health Organization recommendations would be a violation of our policy. And so remove is another really important part of our policy. So you're not just pause putting... It, pause it, pause it, pause it. So they're basically trying to, the woman, she's from YouTube, which is all controlled by these elites. Okay, so they ain't no, as, as, as far as, as the First Amendment and you really having a soapbox to speak on, that's over with. That's over with. All of it is controlled. Everything, all of it. So when the woman is, is saying that, she's making a point to say that this is done in the name of health and, 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 and the misinformation as if the men are inciting uh, is is, excite, is uh, uh, inciting opposition to what they're saying. Only thing these doctors did was just bring out information. Right. That was it. They didn't tell anybody to do anything. So where is the mis Where is the the health hazard? Where is the the issue of safety? BS. The point is is that it went against their viewpoint, which is exactly what this man said. It is a matter of dissent, and they don't take dissent. Mm -hmm. If you say something that is against their viewpoint, it is it is it is by our right, meaning their elite right. We have the right to shut it down. I make this point because the same thing happened in in music I, during the uh, what was it the eighties. Mm -hmm. I talked about this group called PMRC, Parents Music Resource Center, and on your records when you buy your records, because Public Enemy, the group Public Enemy, mm -hmm. had had records that was that was. Designed to reach the black people. Mm. It was designed to lift us up, to take the gold ropes off of our necks mm. and stand up and be a man. But the way he was speaking, they didn't like it. Mm. So they had they have a they have a list of labels that they put on records. One to eight. And one of those is called, well, do you know about explicit lyrics? You see that? Mm. Right. They got another one that's called Bigoted. Bigoted. How in the world are you gonna say that? <laughs> they put that on there. Why? Because they did not agree with the with the uh, music that was being used because they didn't understand it. So where is the free speech? It's gone. Right. It was gone all the way back then. Now the it now it's coming full circle. Now now it's reached up to here. But they, this thing has been happening since the eighties. Mm. Okay, but people been sleep because they thought that it was just going to stay on us. Mm. Now they're showing you that the scent is going all the way up the line. Mm -hmm. Go ahead the truth next to the lie, you're taking the lie down. That's a pretty aggressive approach. We're removing, quote, anything that would go against World Health Organization recommendations. It'll now be taken off the internet. Consider that for a minute. As a matter just of science, it's ludicrous. Like everyone else involved in global pandemic policy, the WHO has often been wrong in its recommendations. A lot of people have. In mid-January, WHO told us that coronavirus could not spread from person to person. In March, they told us that face masks didn't work. Those were lies, and they were welcome on Google's platforms. Doctors who are actually treating patients with the virus, meanwhile, have just been banned. So no, this is not about science. Censorship never is about science. It's about power. Big technology companies are using this tragedy to increase their power over the American population. They're working in concert with politicians in order to do it. Just today, Facebook removed an events page for a political protest in Michigan. Governor Gretchen Whitmer, who runs that state, was no doubt pleased to see it. Grossly mismanaging an entire state is a lot easier when citizens are not allowed to complain about it, and now they're not. 
Last week, Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg explained that protests like these are no longer protected political speech. They're, quote, misinformation. Mm. How do you deal with the fact that Facebook is now being used to, to organize a lot of these protests to defy social distancing, defy the social distancing guidelines in states? Is somebody trying to organize something like that, does that qualify as harmful information? We do classify that as harmful misinformation, and we take that down. Okay, Harmful was... misinformation. Uh, that is a phrase. Yeah. Now, there's more to this. I would like for y'all to watch the rest of this on your own if you can. Um, I don't want to just wear you out with just the video and no other content. Uh, let me let me jump to something else. I'm going to skip a few things. Um, let's see. Give me. Go to the Kent State. Go to the Kent State uh, video. I'm going to say something to set this up. I made the point earlier about what happened in, uh, in 1933 uh, in Nazi Germany. Communist terrorists were the boogeyman. That's, what, that's the point that I want to make. Were the boogeyman, so to speak. Uh, we so-called Negroes are the boogeyman in this country. Okay? They blame us for everything. Okay? Uh, Muammar Gaddafi and Noriega were called the boogeyman. OK, Saddam Hussein was called the boogeyman. These are reasons to go to war. That's what they're saying. Osama bin Laden. Y'all just heard the man say, how's a man in a cave <laughs> going to do this? Going to shut down the most advanced military on the planet, a man in a cave. So that's what he said. OK, uh, and also now Kim Jong-un are the boogeyman. And now today during this pandemic, you so-called white collar, you so-called blue collar Americans are, are uh, experiencing repression. OK. And and <laughs> and you are now the new boogeyman. You're basically the new niggers. That's basically what they're doing to uh, to these uh, white, uh, these these uh, uh, blue collar white folks. I just use that to uh, make that point. I remember in 1990 hearing a speech, a tape of the late Dick Gregory in 1970, who spoke at Kent State University in Ohio. A segment of that speech was about repression. This is, I'm talking about me. I, I literally heard this. I was, I, meaning I heard the tape. I was, this is, in, in 1990, a cousin of mine had his tape on Dick Gregory, and I listened to it, and he was speaking at Kent State University about the events that happened there. He actually went there to speak in Kent State Ohio. Uh, a segment of that speech was about repression. Repression on white folks is what he was mentioning. This is what he was bringing out. He said, in, uh, in other words, white folks were going to become the new niggers of this society. This is the point that he was making. Like those four white students who were shot by National Guardsmen during the protest. Put the video up there. This is another example of dissent. And people thought this was new. This thing has been going on, but people have been duped into thinking that they really had some rights in this country, especially you black, black and Hispanic people. Go ahead, play it. When the sun goes down at Kent State University, the lights come on to remember the four students who died 40 years ago at the height of the Vietnam War. Allison Krauss, Jeffrey Miller, Sandy Scheuer, and Bill Schroeder. President Richard Nixon's expansion of the war into Cambodia in April 1970 produced a wave of student protests on campuses across the country. In Ohio, the National Guard was dispatched to Kent State University after anti-war protesters on campus turned violent at the start of May. On May 4th, a noontime rally turned bloody when National Guardsmen, who had been ordered to disperse the demonstrators, advanced on the angry crowd and wound up firing on them. This photo snapped just moments after the shooting stopped, became one of the iconic images of the Vietnam War era. In addition to the four students who were killed, nine others were injured. Every year, people look back on May 4th. At the university, it's a day of emotion. After 40 years, it's still a moment frozen in time. Ross Simpson, The Associated Press. 
So it was important for y'all to see that little bit of history for the, y'all can get a grip on reality that after 40 years, these people are still mourning over that thing. But we don't mourn for us. We don't, we don't do that for each other. That's amazing. But these people still mourn. These people recognize how repressive this system is. Y'all should, if y'all get a chance, I don't know if y'all ever have access to that speech, um, but it was heavy. It's about a 90, it's a lot, a lot of information in there. But um, about what that, that brother was bringing out concerning how this country was set up and all of that. Um, let me, let me, give me, give me Proverbs. Proverbs eleven twenty one. We're about to end it, and we'll save the next for uh, part two of this particular title. Proverbs uh, eleven twenty one. So I want to say this message to our people, you so called blacks and Hispanic people, and you Israelites. Okay, you see the repression coming down on this system. You ain't really got the full grasp of it yet. Okay, people are doing all kind of things behind behind the scenes okay they're going like i said they're going nuts people committing suicide and all kinds of stuff because they see their system turning against them they see that they're losing it and there's all kinds of documents out here on that all of a lot of information on that okay but you black people you don't you don't need to be trying to trying to get yourselves tied up into this thing don't do that you need to focus on your salvation from the most high uh, uh, proverbs eleven twenty one. proverbs chapter 11 and verse 21 though hand joined in hand the wicked shall not go unpunished. The wicked shall not be unpunished. Read it again. Is that what it say? Though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. The wicked shall not be unpunished. They got to get their justice. I know you so-called Negroes that's in love with them and all of that. You don't want that thing to happen, but you're not the most high. You need to focus on your salvation. That's not an act of hate towards anybody else. That's love for you. Understand the difference. Read it again. Though hand joined in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. Read. But the seed of the righteous. But the seed of the righteous, come on. Shall be delivered. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. It is righteous for you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your people. That's the right thing to do. You ain't talking about act, uh, initiating any acts of aggression or hate towards anybody else. But you need to learn to love yourself because you've been taught to hate yourself. Give me the book of Micah chapter 2. Micah chapter 2. I'm going to read these scriptures real quick. Micah chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Okay, we're in the age of their decadence, not ours. Our kingdom is about to begin. It's their decadence. Understand the difference. Read Micah 2 and 1. Micah chapter 2 and verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil upon their beds when the morning is light. They practice it. That's what they've done to us all these years. Go ahead. Because it is in the power of their hand. Because they were because the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Read. And they covet fields. And they steal lands. Go ahead. And take them by violence. And they murdered the North American Indians, murdered Gad, murdered Ephraim, murdered Simeon, murdered the, uh, murdered our people on the African countries that are still there, murdered all over this planet. Go ahead. And they covet fields and take them by violence. Go ahead. And houses and take them away. So they oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. They took our heritage, calling themselves the Israelites. They got to pay for all of that. Go ahead. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, against this family, so I devise an evil from which ye shall not remove your necks. Neither shall ye go haughtily, for this time is evil. So the Most High is getting ready to bring judgment on this system. That's what he's reading. That's what he's telling you now. Verse 10. Verse 10. Arise ye and depart. For this is not your rest. This is not your rest, you so-called Negroes, West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, Cubans, Mexicans, the Israelites. This is not your rest. Go ahead. Because it is polluted. This, this fascist place is polluted. Go ahead. It shall destroy you. It shall destroy you. You're talking about joining hand with the people that God is getting ready to set flame to. Read. Even with a sore destruction. Even with a sore destruction. You better recognize where you're supposed to be. Now, give me uh, Zephaniah 2 and 1. Then I'm going to give it to the brothers, and we're going to end it up. Okay, when we come back next week, we're going to talk more about this assassinating dissent, and we got some other good stuff for you to show you how we're going, how the Most High going to save us. And all this event about the, so, the so-called UFOs, I got that information. I was hoping that I can get it in here, but we've got too much going on. But we got to get that information in there. You don't realize the galactic salvation that the Most High is going to bring to us. So the Most High got the, got the plan to get us out of here. Read. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together, 
Yea, gather together, O nation, not desire. That's a commandment for you so-called Negroes. He didn't tell you to go wandering off anywhere else. He said, gather yourselves together, the people that are not desired, the Israelites. He's tell, telling you to come together. Come on. Verse 2. Before the decree bring forth. Before the destruction bring forth. Come on. Before the day pass at the... As the chaff, read before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, read seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, seek ye the Lord, all you that obey God's word. That's what it means, the meek of the earth. Come on, which have wrought his judgment, which have wrought God's judgment. Read seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. So that's where we want to be. We want to be away from the anger of the Most High. But you ain't going to be away from the Most High if you're trying to join yourselves in efforts that don't pertain to you. Okay? So with that, Captain, take it away. Yes, sir. So Israel, Most High Christ bless you. Hope you enjoyed the Bible, the book of our fathers. Uh, go ahead and put the uh, post over. So want to definitely want to let y'all know, listen, don't neglect to give your arms. Okay? So all praise the Most High. As we continue to push this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth, just like this radio uh, program here and all the other radio programs in IUIC, you know, this is the help support c continue to push this mission. OK, so for those who would like to give arms, you know, as your local assembly, fill out your envelopes, give to your local uh, 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 assembly and your arms. OK, to give arms online, donate to IUIC Concord via PayPal at iuic.concord.northcarolina at israelunite.org. Also, don't forget, donate to the Booster Club via PayPal at iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. All right? So I hope you all enjoyed the show, Deke. All praise to the Most High. We'll see you, Lord willing. We'll see you next week, and we'll, we'll finish out this uh, topic, and after that we'll go into something Totally different. Next week, I want to get further into how we are going to get ourselves together. That's why I want to leave off this program, talk about us getting together and what, and what to do in spite of the wickedness that is around us. So I wanted to leave you with that note. But next week, we're going to go fully into that. What do we do in spite of the wickedness and how the Lord and his angels are going to assist us and take us away and give us our home, give us our land, give us our salvation. All and with that, all praise to the Most High. Happy Sabbath, Israel. Happy Sabbath, Israel. Most high in Christ bless you all. Shalom. See you next week. Shalom. 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 Shalom.